Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Amanda Carestio. And I'm Meg Healy. Kate is doing well, but still healing from her surgery and won't be joining us today. So we're sending her all the wishes and a speedy recovery. Get well, Kate. Yes, get well. (laughs) I know I had like a filling last week and I was like, oh, this is just like a fraction of what probably came Exactly. So again, wishing her just a really speedy uh, recovery. Mm -hmm. Today on the podcast, though, we're talking about our relationship with sewing over the course of this kind of wild and crazy year. Then we'll discuss some ways we can treat ourselves with sewing. After that, we'll share something in our Sojo segment, and then we'll ask you to share something too. But before we begin, how are you doing, Amanda? (laughs) I'm doing okay. I'm... I'd say I'm probably 80% done with my um, Christmas projects. Oh, nice. So I've got just a few more items to complete. And then I think I'm, you know, I'm I'm so bad. I keep trying to add last minute projects in the mix. But I think I'm going to save some stuff for the week after Christmas. I have some downtime. I can actually enjoy it, not be sewing on a timeline. Um, But but I've, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the things that I've made this year. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. too, like that week is just such a, like, you just don't even know what's going on, like yeah. that middle week. And right. people would love, if you want to, you know, have some time and people would love to still receive like a hammock after the haul. Like you, it doesn't totally. always have to be on, you know, one specific day. I feel like it's just the entire like second half of December. It's yeah, like this, free the for whole all. season. <laughs> it's, it's the whole season. It's worth waiting for if yes. you or I made it. It's going to be good. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I feel like it's just, we're just like at the finish line of, I always think, yeah, like the New Year's Eve, it's just like the finish. And there's always like, I'm pushed to get, you know, all the mm-hmm. presents sewn, all the work done. So you can actually take a break. I feel like I can see the finish line. I'm just kind of I'm like crawling. I, yeah. I was started oh, yeah. running. I went to walking, maybe a little jog, and now I'm full on crawling. <laughs> yes. I feel you this year in particular. I know usually this time of year, I'm like, let's look back and think about the year. And I'm like, I don't want to do that this year. <laughs> I don't oh. want to. I don't want to think about, you know, the things I've made. I, maybe I'll get in that mode that last week of December, but Uh just this year feels different. That's for sure. Um, Oh yeah. And with that, let's, let's hop in um, for a little sewing 2020. Um, This year was to use the favorite buzzword, definitely unprecedented. Um, And it's quite possible that sewing wasn't a major focus for this year, or maybe because you were at home more, Um, you really turn to sewing as an escape or as a way to kind of um, stay connected with people online. So I kind of wanted to talk through that a little bit just because it is, has been such a strange year. It's interesting to think how sewing kind of fit into it um, for each of us. So, um, so I have a couple of questions for you and I to discuss Meg, starting with, um, (laughs) Just generally speaking, how was your sewing practice impacted by the pandemic? And did you sew more or less this year than in previous years? I think at the beginning it was impacted. Like I was feeling really like lucky and privileged to know how to sew and mm-hmm. have a machine and be and especially when it was just it was so um it was just like strange vibes in the beginning like panic was said and there was not masks readily available so to have right. fabric on hand and the ability to just sew um and be able to provide all my friends and family with masks like I, I felt really um really kind of lucky in the beginning. I was mm-hmm. uh, and happy to use, you know, what I know and the tools I had to try and do my best to help and help, you know, local businesses around me get masks and everything like that. So just in the beginning, yeah, just made me feel really lucky to have this tool and this space in my um, loft and everything to, to, mm-hmm. to do that. And I think over the course of the year, I definitely sewed more overall. I would, yeah. I think I did like looking back. I, I really do think I did. How about you? Yeah. I mean, I think that when I put these questions together, I hadn't really even thought about mask sewing, but that oh, was, yeah. that was a yeah. huge, huge. Thing. I mean, yeah. it was a lot of work. Um, it was really the first time that I had 
done kind of a larger scale yeah. charity project because mm-hmm. um, because I was sewing them for free for my husband's yeah. work and donating them and donating my time and that was really that was really lovely. I think there yeah. definitely came a point when I was like kind of done with masks um, yeah. and didn't ever want to sew one again. But again, it was, it was kind of nice. You're right. To feel like you could do something that would help this exactly really kind of overwhelming and kind of horrible situation and make a positive impact. Um, I'd say, I think there were definitely moments through the pandemic um, and through personal events in my life when I turn to sewing as an escape. And I'm always a little bit, um, I don't know, not skeptical, but, um, but I like to keep tabs on that. Cause I, I don't know, I think in some moments in life, escape is exactly what you need. And in Uh some moments you really should like fight through and try to stay engaged. Um, so I definitely had a little bit of that going on. And then I think, I think I also, um, sewed a lot more, just for fun this year. Like I didn't, there were, I had a bit more kind of last minute projects that were just, you know, fabric I had on hand or I went and got fabric and just kind of more impulse sewing Mm -hmm. maybe. So yeah, Meg, I'm curious too. um, How did sewing kind of impact your mental health this year? Was it something that you kind of turned to for that? Or did you look to other things? Um, I guess I really did turn to sewing for that. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that really did help. And mixed with that and just tea, like watching TV and then doing both at the same time. (laughs) What about golf though? (gasps) Oh my gosh. I can't believe I thought didn't mention golf. Of course. Yes, I did turn to that as well. So yeah, but sewing still, it did, it did really did help. Yeah. It, I, I was really grateful to have sewing at yeah. so many points oh, for sure. during this year, not only to just kind of keep myself busy, but to kind of keep myself engaged. It was yeah. nice when there were other parts of your life that you couldn't really plan, but you could always plan your next sewing project. Oh, um, yeah. You know, and so I think that um, I definitely looked to it and I and I loved that kind of hobbies in general took more, took on more importance for people this year. I kind of loved that people were kind of bored and stuck at home and had to (laughs) find ways to, you know, whether it was baking bread or tending to houseplants or sewing, I, you know, I feel like, I feel like the hobbies, um, kind of became really important this year. And I love that sewing was, was definitely a bright part for me Definitely just um, things that I was making and planning, but also ways to connect with people and kind of stay connected through the online sewing community. Um, I think that was that became even more important to me this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking about, too, I don't know if you had any major sewing fails this year. I feel like you never have fails because you can always make it work. I turn it but around. I wondered, yeah. I wondered if, cause I, I was thinking about my, um, UPS inspired jumpsuit or boiler suit that I made. I love that. Um, it's now like infamous and I should really finish it. But I was thinking about that and like how I wondered if those sewing frustrations and fails were like exacerbated this year because like you would if you look to sewing for your kind of release and relief and um sense of fulfillment and you had a fail I wonder if those were just harder to deal with this year yeah I mean speaking from someone who didn't have a fail this year (laughs) (laughs) I could see how it could yeah I yeah, I think my my biggest fail this year was to not really follow up on the things that yeah. I like made uh, resolutions about my mm-hmm. goals. I, I, I we had an episode at the beginning of the year. I was going to sew for the home, and you think this would this would be the oh, perfect yeah. year to do that? But I just see, I just wasn't in the mood to. Like sewing was my fun zone where I couldn't yeah. do, I couldn't go out and meet, you know, friends going out for dinner. Like that was always my fun and I would wear it. And so I didn't want to turn to sewing pillow. Like that's just not fun for me. So mm-hmm. I was accessing my 
my fun through sewing and I just didn't feel like sewing curtains and pillows. So yeah. I'm just kind of, that was a loss for me. So maybe next year we'll see what that holds. So <laughs> I yeah. guess I never really thought about that, that I really turned to sewing as my fun outlet. Yeah. And I, I think, yeah. Yeah. And I realized going through my projects for the year, I sewed a ton more non-work sewing. Mm -hmm. In previous years, I would only sew if it was for work or I could use it for work. And so it was, it was nice to just sew things without taking pictures of every step or just being so nitpicky. It needs to be perfect if it's going, you know, either in the magazine or on a, I realized that, uh, kind of looking back through the year. So it just became fun and uh, I'll get, and I'll get new pillows and curtains next year. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I think I sewed, I sewed two pillows this year. Oh, nice. Like so fast. They were. Yeah. I know. I know. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's talk about kind of what you sewed this year. Do you, did the nature of what you sewed, um, change at all? I think for me, I sewed a lot more loungewear. Like I oh, think yes. all the plans I had for, you know, making jeans and mm -hmm. things that I would normally be wearing out into the colder weather, I definitely, those kind of got pushed to the side and I, I focused more on more active wear pieces, more comfy, cozy home uh -huh. pieces. Um, I did make a few statement pieces throughout the year and a few special things, which I'll talk about in our next segment. But how about you? I feel like you were doing, you did a lot of kind of wardrobe building. Yeah, just kind of my... My home wardrobe building. Yeah. For me, it's the space. Even so, I've worked, um, you know, from home for many, even before this pandemic. Right. And for me, it's just that mental shift in the in the morning, even but still comfy, comfy. Mm -hmm. uh, so my elastic. I think, gosh, I was. Uh, this my one of my favorite fabric stores. They they had like a notion basement, and they were clearing it out a couple years ago, and. For like ten dollars, I got this huge like like bolt of elastic, and wow. it finally got some a dent in it this year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was so thankful to have that. And I just uh, made so many like things with elastic, and definitely the yeah the things that I was sewing was comfort based, one hundred percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I also. Just thinking about it, I definitely sewed a few things. You know how you normally, if you'd sew something, you would like sew it, and then you would not go somewhere immediately, but you'd you wear it a lot for like the next two weeks oh, because you love totally. it. It's your yeah. your most favorite thing you've ever made for two mm -hmm. weeks. Um, and I realized like there were a couple of things that I made that I didn't like. There was a Zadie jumpsuit that I love. Um, I made in this terracotta linen and. I I probably have just not been wearing jumpsuits as much since I've been oh, home. No? Just not. No. I don't know. Um, I should. They're super comfortable. But I realize like there must be some part of the sewing garment process that I love because I love showing off what I make to other people. <laughs> and, you know, that wasn't happening this year. And I kind of realized that that was that was kind of important to me. Yeah, well, that's the good thing about the sewing community online. You get it's that. True. Yes, that you true. can share it via Celebrate. that. But there's just something about... Um, I was actually at the market today getting some um, groceries and I was wearing my lime green Pendleton wool coat. I, it's mm. the coat couture sew along and the young uh, woman working at the, the where I get my, uh, I actually bought sourdough bread. I'm like, I'm not making that. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> and she was obsessed with my coat and I go, I made it. And she goes, wow. She's like, it was, and so that was nice to still kind of even in your interactions, it could be a cashier. We talked about sewing and she goes, is that hard to make? I go, really? It's not. It's just the fabric. It's just some seams. She goes, I was thinking about getting a sewing machine. And I was, so we had a full sewing conversation nice. with the and it was really nice. Um, so just to connect, like, even if you're getting your groceries, I was wearing, you know, tall boots. I put jeans on my I know, nice, like so and I, my green coat, uh, and my Irma. And so just the, you have to just make do with what yep, you can. Yep. And they would, that really put a smile. I walked home and I had a smile on my face. It was just even still that 
satisfaction of <laughs> right? sharing with like my me mate coat. <laughs> oh, I definitely funny. wore new me mates to like drop my kids off at school in yeah. the morning when they were in in person <laughs> yeah. school and just kind of. You know, you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you d- you I'm do wearing what you can. my new blouse. This is the first time I'm wearing it. Just. For on so camera. cute. Yeah, it's the wrap, uh, the peppermint free uh, wrap uh, top. top. Yeah. yeah, in a so Liberty cute. London uh, fabric. Mm-hmm. So cute. Yeah. So. Yeah, I will. And it I, <laughs> I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> I I do love that about this year too. Like I feel like sewing sometimes feels like. I forget that not everybody sews because, yes. you know, when I'm online and I'm, you know, the people that I connect with sew and it was kind of nice for sewing to not feel quite so niche this year, you know, yeah. like because you can strike up a conversation about sewing with someone at the grocery store or you can, you know, people, there were a lot of people in my neighborhood Facebook group asking questions about sewing yeah. machines and, you know, mask sewing. And so I really felt like I had some valuable information to share mm-hmm. kind of to wrap things up because gosh that was that was a big year yeah I wondered if you have thought any about your kind of goal setting for next year and if this year has kind of changed how you're approaching that um I'll just take it day by day <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not making any goals or resolutions uh-huh. I'm just gonna see what next year bring and just take it day by day and fabric by fabric. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) Pattern by pattern. (laughs) I feel the same. You know how I like to plan and I don't, but that being said, I can't even remember what my resolutions were this year. I think everything just got tossed. Yeah. But I do, I think, yeah, it's, it's changed my perspective about, you know, there's just stuff you can't plan and can't plan for, but also, I think thinking about sewing for fun is something I need to just, I need to Uh explore more. I mean, I enjoy sewing, even if it's not um, a crazy fun project. Um, You know, even those simple everyday pieces really bring me a lot of satisfaction and joy. But thinking about, thinking about sewing, thinking about how I spend my time while I'm sewing and making sure there's room for those just just for fun pieces because yeah that, those little moments of joy definitely helped me get through the year oh for sure for sure all right well let's take a quick break and then we'll come back with our second segment mm-hmm So we have touched on selfish sewing in the past, but especially around the holidays, it's important to also give a gift to yourself, whether it's handmade or not. So let's talk about treating yourself this time of year, especially after this year, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and then making the time to sew something special because you also never know where it will lead. You never know how Mm -hmm. you'll feel and what, you know, future projects that can lead to after. So have you treated yourself this year? Have you sewn something that you just really treated yourself to? Yeah, I feel like I did that a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly. Um, And and that took a couple forms. I was thinking about it and I was kind of looking back on my Instagram feed because that's where I I definitely use that as kind of my photo journal of what I make. Otherwise... I cannot remember what I've made from month to month. Um, but I did make myself a kind of special birthday dress this year that oh, yeah. I've only worn it once, but that was for my, uh, we went out um, for a birthday dinner over the summer and that was special. I spent some time really kind of, it was a hack um, on the Roscoe blouse by True Bias. And I oh, that was spent a lot a of time, dress. yeah, just thinking it through. Um, I made myself more loungewear this year, um, as I mentioned, and with that kind of more athleisure type pieces that I could wear for my newfound roller skating hobby. Yes. Um, which was definitely a treat. Like I thought maybe I should just go buy a couple, um, pairs of leggings and shorts and stuff. And I decided, no, I wanted to make some for myself. And I drafted a pattern and spent some time kind of perfecting that and made myself a couple. I've got my little roller skating capsule now. 
And I also, I made my first rope this year. I believe <gasps> it was um, part of the, gosh, it feels like forever ago. I think it was this year when we did our first sew and roll challenge. Yeah, it was this year. <laughs> that was this year. Okay, good. I made the Helen's Closet Suki rope oh. for myself in iCat to yeah. kind of fulfill my sew and roll challenge. And there's nothing like super fancy about the fabric or, and, and I had to do some creative pattern Tetris, pattern piece Tetris, because I kind of forget like robes just eat a lot of fabric. They do. I, that's, I always underestimate it, but I will say that whenever I wear that robe, you know, on the weekend mornings, drinking coffee, whenever I wear it, I just feel like, oh, I should, this was such a perfect make. I just love it so much. Yeah. I probably um, the fabric that I made it in is a pretty lightweight eye cat. So I could probably stand to make a cozier winter version. But I really do love that. Really do yeah. love that piece I oh. made. How about you? How have you treated yourself? Well, a lot. No. Yeah. <laughs> this year, I feel like I've been treating this in the sewing realm of really buying a lot of fabric. I yeah. bought so I've never spent this much money on fabric in my entire life and buying indie patterns. Like this year I really embra- yeah. like treated myself to you know spending money on just stuff like non-work related because usually sometimes mm-hmm. for work projects we you know if we have a fabric sponsor and I would always just try as I mentioned earlier I would my sewing was really what's that word I, Carp- compartmentalize Carmona- Car- oh it is almost friday y'all it's yeah car- how did you say it compartmentalize <laughs> okay i'm just that what you said yeah. i don't know what's in the <laughs> what's in the water in canada what's right in your now tea? <laughs> <It's-> <laughs> <laughs> work and then fun sewing and yeah, so it was really yeah. nice to um especially support lots of canadian um fabric companies mm-hmm. and indie indie designers so that was the w- way i really treated myself this year and i've just been planning all sorts of all sorts of make with no particular t- i just when when I feel like getting to that printed out pattern with, I pinned yeah. all these like little swatches and those are kind of my, yeah, I guess my little treat yourself pile for sure. Uh, but with this that. topic, yeah, really came, I wrote a blog post on Sew Daily and especially around the holiday season, if you are sewing your gifts, just make sure to sew yourself a gift too, you mm-hmm. know, this mm-hmm. time of year. So I feel like I gave my gift of the Zadie jumpsuit and that's what I wore in the holiday social. Like that was, I felt like that was just, and that's going to lead to maybe about 10 more Zadies for sure. Exactly. But <laughs> cause the holidays can be super stressful. And, um, in the, in the post I reference, you know, and I've always done this when I make holiday gifts, you know, one for me, one for you, I like bulk sewing. And so whenever I'm doing a bulk sewing gift, I always, cut and sew one for myself too. When I did the faux fur headbands, I've made slippers one year, tea towels, aprons. I always make one for myself too. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I totally did that this year. I was making my daughter some velvet kind of bell-bottom leggings and I had bought myself some velvet, stretch velvet, uh, to make some for myself. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take, they're so quick to sew. I was like, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to take a little pause in my holiday sewing. Just whip up these for me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I did that. And it, it did kind of feel, it helped kind of preserve the balance there. So it wasn't like I was just giving it, giving all of my time and energy away. Although I I do enjoy making gifts. It, it just can, it can feel a little uh-huh. um, mechanical and like yeah. a little pressure, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. And through like deciding that I wasn't going to make my holiday gifts this year, just kind mm-hmm. of making some for myself. Actually, yes. I I actually am making some gifts because I feel like it, not because I have to. And yeah. that's been really nice as mm-hmm. well. So I've actually have been holiday sewing, but it's just so weird how a mind like switch, you know, when I made yeah. myself something, it kind of it leads me into another question, you know, does treating yourself lead to treating others? And for me, it 100% does because it makes me feel good. And when I feel good, I feel like I didn't put stress on me. I'm going to make, mm-hmm. didn't s- start out the month. Okay. I need to make this for this. And then it feels like a task more just 
what you want to do. And if your machine's already set up for embroidery, I, I was going to say, I'm not doing any embroidery gifts, but now I 100% am because I'm just like loving it. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, I definitely, I think it does. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I think, especially as my kind of everyday wardrobe gets pretty full and uh-huh. I need less and less um, garments, yeah. I've I've definitely made more for my husband this year. I've made him, I definitely gave him, treated him to the gift of elastic waist pants. Oh, yes. I kind of lost track (laughs) of how many I've made for him. I've been using the free mantle pants pattern um, from LB Textiles. And I love that pattern. Um, The other one that I made was the um, Ilford jacket. And that was a pattern I bought with my husband in mind. But then of course I was like, I'll test it out first by making something for myself. You need to test it out for sure. Yeah. So, um, but I've been, I've kind of, I've been loving that this year too. It's like, you know, buying patterns that more gender neutral patterns that work for myself and my husband. I mean, there's just something lovely about getting, the most out of a pattern, out of a single pattern, getting stuff for, for multiple people in your life. So I've also uh, enjoyed that. But yeah, the um, the Ilford I made for my husband was denim with a flannel lining. And that was probably one of the more, that was, it was definitely, you know, when you put the outer t- together with the inner, like that becomes a pretty big investment um, for supplies yeah. and time. It was maybe it- one of the fanciest things I made. I realized that I need warmer pants and Mm -hmm. I wanted to do some line. Do you need to size up a little bit if you are inserting like a thicker fleece lining? Does that sizing come into consideration? (laughs) Just a little off time. I'm just curious. So did you you size up at all or accommodate for it? I mean, for me, when I made that jacket, there is a tutorial about adding a lining. The pattern doesn't come with a lining, but it's... um, it's pretty oversized. It's a drop shoulder jacket. So I feel like... There was already mm. kind of okay. an oversized silhouette. So I don't know. I think as long as you're working with something that, you know, is not super fitted, um, you're probably okay. But you might want to size up if you're going for a more fitted look. Yeah. I want some pants that are fleece lined or flannel mm-hmm. lined. I mm-hmm. really want that. Or I could just try and find a double-sided fabric. Yeah. That's always a great work around too. (laughs) But yeah, I also treated um, my husband to a jacket as well that moved. Mm -hmm. I turned a moving blanket into a jacket. So that was really nice too. Mm -hmm. Um, It just, I just felt like I wanted to do it and it was really nice. And now he, I'm getting asked by some of his coworkers if I can make, and so now it's becoming a big (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I need to think about, think on that one because it (laughs) was, I broke so many needles, but it's so thick. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was oh, out of love. that was amazing, though. So mm-hmm. it's like totally one of a kind, totally oh, custom. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And he, wa- he wanted his little name on it, embroidered. And so that was really special. But uh, And it was nice, you know, after I've been sewing stuff for myself to kind of make, make him something, too. And he mm-hmm. was helping in the process as well. So do you have another treat yourself project on on the horizon? I have some wool fabric that I think I'm going to spend the holidays turning into a jacket for myself Ooh. with the lining. And that's going to be definitely a kind of involved and fancy project for me. Um, I'm just going to take my time with it. Like I'm not going to put any pressure on myself to get it done by any certain time. Um, But that's definitely on my horizon. And I was actually, um, when I was thinking about gifts, of course, I was thinking about gifts for myself too. Yeah. And there's a new um, quilted slipper pattern from So DIY that I was checking out. And I was thinking that would be, I mean, such a great gift, but also like the perfect kind of project to make over the holidays you know, for that Uh holiday week. Um, Cause it's definitely, my sewing room is in our downstairs. It's mostly underground and it gets kind of cold. So I feel like that might be a good investment either way. Yeah. How about you? Um, I have a lot. I do. (laughs) I think it's just, yeah, (laughs) going through all my 
fabrics that I, and I've been buying, I've been really conscious about buying all natural fibers and organ. And so I've been spending and investing a lot more in the fabric. So I feel like that in itself is a uh, treat yourself. So a little bit more goes into, I don't just, absolutely just cut it. You know, it's just cut it out randomly, like on a whim. I'm kind of, you know, thinking it through what is the best, um, you know, pattern and style and kind of suitable, what's suitable for this this uh, fabric. So I think some of my silk, uh, I just actually, like yesterday, I, last night I finished up uh, a silk blouse and that was really nice. And I spent time, it has these like off the shoulder gathered yokes and stuff. So that was, I guess I did do that last night. And it was so funny. Julian comes over to me, he gets home from work and he goes, Oh, you're, you're working late. Like what's this for? And I was like, just because, just just because I want a new blouse. And he was, he was really, he was really, it was just weird. For, and then I guess that's what really triggered mm-hmm. me just sewing for, for the fun of it. He thought I was working late because it's, it's, it's hard to differentiate yeah. working and, and just sewing. So yeah, that was sometimes I use it the other way. And on the weekends, I'll be like, it's a work project. I gotta, I gotta make oh, time I know. for this. It can, de- it can, mm-hmm. it can, also it's a way to, um, if it went once upon a time, if there was plans and yeah. you just didn't feel like, I just need to, I need, I have a lot of work to do exactly. today. I, these pan, I need to sew these pants and people don't know. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, that's Use so it to funny. your advantage for sure. I, know. I, I will know. say too, that in terms of treating myself, I, I bought a lot of fabric this year as well. Um, I think that this year was different mm-hmm. because there were, I mean, I did some I did a good amount of online fabric shopping. I kind of always had done some of that, but I did a lot of thrifted fabric this year. Oh, I think me too. I'd say that maybe 50% of my new fabric purchases were actually thrifted because I kind of just looking at alternative fabric sources, I found a new secondhand craft store that's probably about five miles from my house. And I got a lot of fabric from there that in Sometimes when I buy thrifted fabric, it sits in my stash and I definitely have yeah. some of that, but I used a lot of what I purchased from there kind of right away. So that was a good, that was, I, I felt good about treating myself that way too. Cause it wasn't as much investment. I wasn't, yeah. you know, buying something new necessarily, um, and supporting a local small business too. So yeah, when and yeah, when and when. Yeah. I, this is the first year that I actually thrifted fabric, um, uh, because of you, all your successes, your yeah. fun finds. And so I really ventured over to the, that section of the thrift store and even filming. I mean, I can't believe I filmed two seasons of style revive, which wouldn't have really happened without like without 2020 being, you know, yeah. as it was. And it was like a super fun, sustainable series. And that was really fun. And yeah, so tr- treat yourself as look inside, even up cycling a certain thing and spending a little time on a new holiday zoom outfit, just looking at what you have upcycling, mm-hmm. mending, making, mending. Yes. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot of ways fun, to, but- Yeah. Treat yourself in sewing. Well, let's hop over and talk sojo. I love this portion of the show when we talk about our sewing mojo, what is giving us inspiration this year. Um, Meg, do you mind going first? Sure. Well, I have, I'm staring at it right now. It's, (laughs) I have the Palmer pullover ready to, ready to go. It's, I got this kind of coral fuchsia pink and then lime green, obviously fleece. And so, and then a white oh zipper. Gosh. And I'm going to add ribbing to the hems. Yeah, and that'll the, be the, so the, good. I was like, so I'm going to add cuffs and white ribbing to match like my white plastic zipper. So I'm, I'm making that. Oh my gosh. That's going to be so cute. Yeah. And just as a reminder to everyone, the Palmer pullover is still live on oh, sodaily.com. Yeah. Still free. And you've got all of January to get signed up, grab that mm-hmm. pattern and watch those videos. Cause that would also be a really good kind of holiday um, week after the holidays project. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just these wind chills are getting yeah a lot here in Toronto and yeah. I just need more. Uh, need to cozy layers. I have cozy layers. Yeah. How about yeah. you? Um, I think I am... I'm kind of there. I'm thinking about cozy stuff. Uh-huh. I, I, like I said, I've really enjoyed making gifts this year. Uh-huh. And 
I think I'm going to actually sew, probably not absolute first, but first in a while projects for my boys. I'm going to make them some little matching sweatshirts. Oh, cute. I have some... This has never happened to me before, but I placed an online fabric order and I actually got an extra yard by accident. So yeah, bonus points. So I'm going to um, put that to good use and make them some projects with it. So yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling I'm feeling momentarily inspired by treating other people. Mm-hmm. And mostly they've just relentlessly guilted me into it. So <laughs> I'm just actually, gonna never, go ahead and give in. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me. This year, I actually got I ordered fabric online, and I was sent the wrong complete order, and they oh, just wow. let me keep it. So, oh yeah, it was just broadcloth, but still, it's good for little uh, for little projects. So I'm actually I I'm looking at it as well. It's next to my fleece. I'm making my neighbor uh, an apron. Oh, uh, <laughs> out of it. Yeah, it's so funny because literally our building, you know, just becomes like our bubble and family yeah. and we, we all, Julian always calls him the die he goes is the diner open because he cooks like late night if he <laughs> <laughs> um, he's so a really funny. good cook so I'm making him uh um I got a, an embroidery design that's you know the diner oh 24 7 diner and so I'm gonna make oh him a, a just because I feel like not because I need yeah. to sew him a gift or anything so I'm really excited so that was completely free definitely putting that to good use so that was fun you just reminded me of that yeah <laughs> That is so funny. Free fabric. (laughs) Well, let's hop into Sew and Tell. Um, Last episode, we asked what your take is on sew frosting this year. And we got some good answers. Um, I'm going to read an Instagram comment from Sadie Fox Studio. Hey, Sadie. Sadie, um, Sadie. actually, she designs quite a few projects for us uh, for Sew News. And she lives... um, close to our Colorado office. She says, I have some leftover large rainbow sequin knit fabric. Oh my gosh. I'm thinking Mm -hmm. of making a loose fitting cami to wear over a turtleneck and cozy pants. Add a little bling to my secret pajamas. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. I, I need a, like a nice slim fit black turtleneck in my life. I should probably go ahead and make a Nico. And then I can have something to wear under sequin cami. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. I I just made this espresso brown fleece turtleneck Nico and it's Mm. oh so nice. Mm -hmm. Then we had another comment. I'm just going to say I love this comment so much. It's perfect. Uh, It's from Selvage and Stitch. Also very cute IG handle. Mm -hmm. Um, They said, because... All the Christmas parties have been canceled. This year, my hashtag so frosting is to make some really beautiful lingerie. I'm talking the full matching set of lacy underwire bra, lacy undies, and garter belt, and handmade hosiery. I even bought a lingerie sewing advent calendar to try out some mystery fabrics and findings. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. I love that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I did I did take my first foray into underwear making but mine was like scraps of knit (laughs) fabric that I had but I love the idea of sew frosting lingerie that should probably be its own like subset of the challenge I know I know uh I actually in part of my treat yourself uh, indie pattern uh buying I I saw this pattern the new underwear pattern from Sophie Hines I believe it's Mm -hmm. called their altitude thong and it has a flounce it's very like you wouldn't wear it under it. Yeah, it's, it's just, just because. It's just for prancing. Gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I just love the idea of so frosting as just fancy lingerie. It's I, so good. Yeah. Also, when I was thrift shopping for my second season of Style Revive, I I found this. It's this retro. It, it was handmade. It was totally handmade. And it looks like from the 50s little slip. And I was going to upcycle, into, upcycle it into like a cami or something and then I just ended up keeping it and I sometimes I wear it at night and it's just this green vintage handmade slip and it's so cute and I just That's, love love the idea sometimes, I know I don't have yeah. I don't have fancy nightgowns or so oh, no or anything like that <laughs> 
Yeah, but that w- that but would be fun to Really make. great. I'm excited yeah. to s- and enjoy your journey, Selfish and Stitch. I love that. That's just mm-hmm. so perfect for right yeah. now. Very nice. Love it. Love that take mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so this week, we are asking you how your sewing changed in mm-hmm. 2020. Yeah. However, however you want to address that question, however you want to come at it, um, let us know either via email on our show notes page or on Instagram and we might read your comment on air. Yeah, we definitely want to hear. It sounds like we're wrapping up this podcast in perfect timing. If you can hear my <laughs> my loft pipes, uh, the heat oh, when no. they when they heat, it sounds like someone's hammering on them with the with the wrench. So this is just in time. Just in time. <laughs> just in well, time. Well, <laughs> happy stitching, everyone. Yes. Have a lovely holiday. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to treat yourself. Don't, yes, don't forget to treat yourself. Is this our last, this is our last show of the year, isn't it? This is our last show of the year. Wow. Wow. (laughs) We made it. Yes. All right. Have a safe holidays, everybody. Sew and Tell is a Sew Daily podcast and produced by Golden Peak Media. It's hosted and produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zynard. Daisha Clay is our producer. Director of podcasts is Jared Mayer. Tiffany Warble is director of content. Kelsey Ratterman handles our marketing. And Andrea Lotz does all things digital. If you'd like more information on sponsoring or advertising on Sew and Tell, go to goldenpeakmedia.com.